let's study the malate aspartate shuttle. The malate aspartate shuttle provides a link between glycolysis and the TCA cycle. Let's first begin with this reaction that we should be familiarized with studying the TCA cycle, and that is the conversion of malate to axyl acetate. That actually is catalyzed by malate dehydrogenase. It's the last reaction in the TCA cycle before oxalo acetate reacts with acetyl-CoA and starts the process over again. So malate dehydrogenase takes malate, converts it to oxalo acetate. As you can see here, NAD plus gets reduced to NADH. Malate gets oxidized to oxalo acetate. What um, happens to this oxalo acetate is an alternative fate. And one of that fate could be its conversion to its corresponding alpha amino acid. Now we talked a little bit about these transaminases. They're particularly important in converting alpha amino acids to their alpha keto acids and vice versa. So in the mitochondrial matrix we have present a transaminase known as AST. And what that does is it takes oxaloacetate and transaminates it to its corresponding alpha amino acid known as aspartate. Now in that reaction glut glutamate donates its amino group to oxaloacetate. So when glutamate donates its amino group to oxaloacetate, glutamate by virtue of its donation of its alpha amino group becomes alpha ketoglutarate and oxaloacetate by virtue of receiving that alpha amino group becomes the alpha amino acid aspartate. So that aspartate actually traverses from the inner mitochondrial membrane and the outer mitochondrial membrane to the cytoplasm. Notice that we have an antiporter here. The amino acid aspartate comes out from the matrix, out of the outer mitochondrial membrane into the cytoplasmic pool, and along with it, glutamate comes in an antiporter manner towards the mitochondrial matrix from the cytoplasm. Now here, aspartate gets converted back to its corresponding alpha keto acid. So if you notice that we have a transamination um, that's occurring in opposite directions. So the AST transaminase runs in one direction in the mitochondrial matrix, while in the cytoplasm, while in the cytoplasm, the cytoplasmic form runs in the reverse direction, that is converting aspartate to oxaloacetate. Now, in this reverse transamination reaction catalyzed by this transaminase, aspartate will donate its alpha amino group. And when aspartate donates its alpha amino group, it becomes oxaloacetate. The recipient of that alpha amino group from aspartate is alpha ketoglutarate. And by virtue of receiving that alpha amino group donated originally by aspartate, the recipient being alpha ketoglutarate, it becomes its corresponding alpha amino acid glutamate. And as stated before, that glutamate is in an anti-porter with um, aspartate. So we have transamination reactions running in opposite directions in the cytoplasm and in the mitochondrial matrix. Now what happens to this oxaloacetate here? Well, oxaloacetate gets converted to malate. So if you realize that this is essentially the TCA cycle reaction run in reverse, there's two isoforms of malate dehydrogenase, MDH1 in the matrix that we studied, and this is the cytoplasmic version, NDH2 as it's sometimes called, and it runs in the opposite direction, converting oxaloacetate to malate. As in any dehydrogenase reactions, there needs to be a corresponding oxidation for a corresponding reduction. So in this case, oxaloacetate gets reduced to malate, causing the oxidation of NADH to NAD+. Now this is not any old NADH, but it can be the NADH that's generated via this re reaction in glycolysis, the reaction of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate.
So MDH, the cytoplasmic version, catalyzes the reduction of oxaloacetate to malate. NADH gets oxidized simultaneously to NAD+. Remember, for any every oxidation reaction, there needs to be a corresponding reduction reaction and vice versa. And that malate that's generated in the cytoplasm can then traverse back from the cytoplasm through the outer mitochondrial membrane and through the inner mitochondrial membrane through this transporter. And now this transporter is an antiporter because as malate goes in through this antiporter, alpha-ketoglutarate comes in the opposite direction from the matrix into the cytoplasm. And now this malate that's now back into the mitochondrial matrix can then go ahead and proceed towards this reaction of the TCA cycle. So essentially, malate, by going back into the matrix through this antiporter, completes this metabolic circuit. Actually, this metabolic circuit is right here, where you have MDH in the matrix and in the cytoplasm going in opposite directions, and you have the transamination reaction, the transaminase, going in opposite directions in the matrix and in the cytoplasm. One important thing to recognize in all of this is this NADH. This NADH that originally came from this glycolytic reaction, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, has now come into the form into the matrix. So the NADH that donated its reducing equivalence to reduce malate has now come back and become reduced here by oxidizing malate to oxaloacetate. So the NADH actually from uh, this glycolytic reaction is indirectly through this circuit brought into the mitochondrial matrix where it can participate, that NADH can participate in the electron transport chain. So this actually satisfies one problem in that you bring in this NADH to the matrix so that it can donate its reducing equivalents, but it also satisfies another problem in that it regenerates the NAD plus so that GAPDH, this enzyme, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, it replenishes the NAD plus so that this reaction can occur occur for another cycle and subsequent cycles. Now usually this is a problem for bacteria, particularly prokaryotes and anaerobic microorganisms, because they need to find a way to regenerate the oxidized NAD plus in order for GAPDH, this enzyme, to go for further rounds. And what how that is achieved for anaerobic bacteria and other microorganisms is that that pyruvate is usually converted to lactic acid or ethanol or acetaldehyde or some form or the other. But in aerobic organisms and eukaryotic organisms, um, the malate aspartate shuttle is one way to actually bring the NADH into the matrix and regenerate the oxidized form of the cofactor to allow this enzymatic reaction of glycolysis to occur again. Typically and realistically, um, there is a cytoplasmic pool of NADH, so you'll have a reservoir already pre-existing in the cytoplasm, and you'll have a reservoir already pre-existing in the mitochondrial matrix. Um, and that reservoir is maintained by flux, increasing flux or decreasing flux in glycolysis and increasing flux or decreasing flux through the TCA cycle. But this malate aspartate shuttle is really an ingenious method. You notice here that we have um, in the matrix one compartment, two enzymes going in one direction, and in a second compartment, the cytoplasm, the two uh, isoforms of the enzyme going in the opposite directions. So you have a metabolic circuit creating NADH to go from this glycolytic pathway into this TCA cycle uh, pathway, this reaction of the TCA cycle. And what bridges these together are these antiporters that um, uh, exist in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The inner mitochondrial membrane is going to be very contiguous with the outer mitochondrial membrane. So really, when malate traverses, it traverses through this antiporter with alpha-ketoglutarate, outer and inner mitochondrial membrane. And the same thing here, as aspartate goes in, with its antiporter and taking glutamate in the opposite directions, because of the contiguousness 
uh, because of the contiguous nature of the inner and outer mitochondrial membrane, it just essentially traverses from the matrix to the cytoplasm. Where normally NADH is not permissible, it cannot traverse both the outer and inner mitochondrial membrane. Yet through this ingenious metabolic circuit, NADH is indirectly brought into the mitochondrial matrix through this malate aspartate shuttle.